In integral theory, one of our main lenses, or tools for perspective taking, are quadrants. But it really starts out with this understanding of interiors and exteriors. So we're doing both ontology and epistemology here. Ontology is what is it, and epistemology is how do you know. So we're talking about both what there is, the different aspects of reality, and how we know. And it starts out with this understanding of interiors and exteriors, and that splits further into first person, second person, and third person distinctions or ways of talking. And that goes further still into this further distinction of not just interiors and exteriors, but individuals and collectives. And so now you have not just subjective and objective, but the intersubjective, or the relative, and the interobjective which has to do with systems theory, so the distinction between facts and theories, and the distinction between subjective and relative. The idea is that every individual, every instance, is representing all four of these quadrants, that they tetra-arise, is what we say in integral theory, the tetra-arising of the quadrants. Sounds fun, right? So then within these different quadrants, within these different aspects of reality. There are different approaches to knowledge and different types of study. This is actually extended further into what we call integral methodological pluralism, or what we call zones. And just to give you a quick example, in the upper left quadrant, you can take a first-person perspective on a first-person perspective, like you're giving a report of your own first-person perspective, and that is called phenomenology. Whereas, you can also give a third-person perspective on a first-person perspective, and that's called structuralism. In the upper right quadrant, there's also a first-person perspective on a third-person perspective and a third-person perspective on a third-person perspective. So the idea in integral theory is to take into account all these perspectives, all of these approaches to knowledge, and see what they all bring to the table to try to get a more holistic or integrated perspective. The tendency far too often is for people to try to reduce everything to the part of the map or the part of reality that they know about, that they study. So for example, the physics teacher might say, everything's physics. The psychology teacher might say everything is psychology. There are people who want to reduce truth to what you can measure or grasp in your hand. You have your empirical reductionist. You have your people who say truth is relative. So you have your relativistic reductionists. Some people might say things like, I had an experience or I felt something and so I know that it's true. It's a type of subjective reductionism. With an integral approach, we want to realize that these are all just aspects of the truth. So these quadrants almost act as like a type of psychoactive checklist for us to be like, okay, well, yes, that's a factor, but that is not the whole picture. And in fact, if we want to get the whole picture, we know that we're going to have to take into account all of these other factors to really, truly have the most integrative perspective. Now, you can take all of this a step further still and expand upwards and notice that the map is not the territory and that all of our ways of talking about things are relative in relative human language and it's not the thing in itself which is the absolute truth and there's absolute truth in all four quadrants make sure to like subscribe and if you find value in these videos consider supporting me on patreon i have a lot more videos on these types of topics on my channel the ones that are immediately relevant are my videos on integral epistemology and my intro to integral theory video on the quadrants.